often, when people imagine coercive threats, they picture threats of physical violence. And that can definitely happen. But what's even more common when it comes to sexual assault are emotional threats. Like blackmail. Blackmail is a specific type of threat where someone threatens to expose private information about someone or to spread a rumor about them to get them to engage in sexual activity. For example, if two people were in a same-gender relationship and one partner threatened to tell everyone the other's sexual orientation before they had come out, that would be blackmail. Another common type of blackmail is when someone has intimate or private photos of another person, and they threaten to leak those photos as a way to coerce that other person into sending more pictures or into other types of sexual activity. Coercive threats can also look like someone threatening to end or change a relationship. These threats might be made directly by someone telling their partner that they will break up with them or cheat on them if they don't agree to engage in sexual activity. These threats can also be made indirectly. For example, someone might stop talking to their partner or stop being affectionate towards them, threatening to end or change the relationship without using any words at all. For some people, that relationship might be really important to them, and they might feel like losing it just isn't an option. So they go along with the sexual activity, not because they want to, but because they feel that they don't have any other choice. One last type of coercive threats are threats made to someone's basic needs. If someone says they'll take away another person's shelter, food, transportation, education, or income if they say no to sexual activity, that's coercion. A boss can't threaten to fire an employee. A teacher can't threaten to fail a student. A landlord can't threaten to evict a tenant. And a bus driver can't threaten to kick a passenger off the bus just to get that person to engage in sexual activity with them. Just like threatening to take away a basic need from someone so they'll engage in sexual activity is a type of coercion, so is withholding a basic need in the first place. For example, if someone really needs medical attention, and their doctor will only provide them that medical care if they agree to go on a date or to kiss first, and the only reason why someone agrees to that kiss is to get the medical care that they need, and not because they actually want to kiss their doctor, that's coercion. The same is true if someone is withholding access to food, shelter, transportation, or money. While there are some cases where adults can choose to engage in sexual activity for money, anyone under the age of 18 can never consent to sexual activity in exchange for money. That is considered sexual exploitation. No matter the type, whether it's blackmail, threats to a relationship, or threats to someone's basic needs, coercive threats can leave a person feeling confused and helpless. If someone engages in sexual activity with someone after they've been threatened, it isn't because they want to engage in sexual activity. They've been made to feel like they have no other choice. Remember, coerced sexual activity is sexual assault, and the only person responsible for that is the person who chose to make those coercive threats, and never the person being coerced. If you or someone you know has experienced sexual assault and needs support, please consider reaching out to one of the following options. The SACE Support and Information Line, Alberta's One Line for Sexual Violence, or our online chat at sace.ca. All of these are available from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. daily. 24-hour support is available by calling the Kids Help Phone 1-800-273-8255.